So I've been learning a bunch of interesting stuff about solo mining recently that I want to share with you guys and I just got this AL0 from Coin Mining Central so I figured in this video I'm going to show you quickly how to set this up for both pool and solo mining and then after that we'll talk about some kind of important stuff about solo mining that I think a lot of you might not be aware of. It's a few different things that all relate to improving your odds when solo mining and I'm also going to try to solo mine with this AL0 with the hopes that I might make more doing that compared to just regular pool mining and I also want to thank the hero miners Alifi mining pool for sponsoring this video and making this guide possible so let me go plug this in and we'll get started so this is the Alifi miner that I'll be setting up today the ice river al0 I'm sure most of you are aware of it I will leave a link to it down in the video description if you want to check it out however if you are looking for a sort of low power at home miner for Alifium I would highly recommend you would go for the AL2 Lite over the AL0. As you can see here, the AL0 is about $1,000, while the AL2 Lite is only $300 more, roughly. But the AL0 is 400 giga hash, while the AL2 Lite is 2 tera hash. So five times the hash rate for just $300 more. And not only that, but you can actually get a bit of a discount on this because I did talk to Coin Money Central who did send me this AL0 that we're going to be setting up today and they have made a discount code for specifically you guys for specifically this AL2 Lite. So let me show you that by just going to my cart here and this discount code is just SEBAL2 and it gives you about $65 off on the AL2 Lite. So it's a quick little recommendation for you there. If you are looking for an at-home Alifium miner, I have that discount code for you down in the video description, as well as a link to the AL2 Lite as well. And if you do make a purchase through that link, it does help out my channel here with a small commission at no extra cost to you. So Thank you very much if you do do that and for those of you who are curious as of today the AL0 uh, at my power rate of 14 cents per kilowatt hour makes about 95 cents after power in mining profit and the AL2 light at my power rate uh, makes uh, just a little bit under five dollars per day off the power so if you're curious that's what the profitability is for these two miners as of today but let's get into some pool and solo mining setup for alifium mining so all i've done is plug my al0 into power and ethernet and then looked it up with my ip scanner to find the ip address for that device and then opened that IP address in my web browser on a device that's on the same network as the AL0. And this is what I get. So a little login here. And the login for iServer Miners is just uh, admin on the name and then let, uh, numbers one through eight uh, on the password. And as you can see here, it has some uh, pre-applied uh, wallet address that it is mining to. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe that and we're gonna be mining to hero miners. And I'm gonna show you both the pool setup and the solo mining setup. So the easiest way is just go to alifium.herominers.com and then click on start up at the top menu here. And it will give you a list of all of their uh, pool servers around the world here, as well as the different ports, depending on what kind of hardware you are mining with. And a little clever thing it does here is it shows you their latency and this is from your computer to these different uh, pool servers that they have around the globe. So obviously just go for the one with the lowest latency. For me that is the Germany one here. So I'm just going to copy this and then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to delete all of this to begin with. There we go. And I'm just going to paste in first the pool server address like this and then I'm going to make a colon and I'm going to come back to the hero miners website here and I'm going to see that since I have the iServer AL0 the port number that I want is 1221 so I'm going to copy that then I'm going to come back here and after my colon I'm just going to paste in 1221 make sure there is no space there there we go I'm just going to keep this wallet address for this guide and then I can just name this whatever so let's just call it Seb's AL0 and then all I have to do is just save this. Okay, so apparently it didn't like me just leaving pool two and three blank. So I just copied the same thing into those and then I'm gonna hit save. And there we go, uh, operation succeeded, great. So what I usually do after updating my pools in any of my ASIC miners is I just hit restart as well. 
to give the machine a little reboot. So I'm just going to do that and then we'll see how it's going. And while my AL0 is rebooting, I want to talk a little bit about just pool versus solo mining. With pool mining, as you probably are aware, you know, you mine together with a bunch of different people and you essentially, because there's so many of you, you take kind of the luck factor out of mining and finding blocks because so many of you, you're going to be finding blocks on a regular basis and you all get paid out based on your hash rate. So you get a fair payment for the work your miner puts in. Now with solo mining, you only get rewarded if you specifically actually find a block. And I have a few other videos going more in depth on how solo mining actually works. But the main thing I want to focus on for this video is just one of the reasons as to why some people choose to solo mine. And that is that if you are lucky, you can get a better mining yield from solo mining than pool mining. Because if you're lucky enough to hit blocks more regularly than, you know, average, you will be paid more. And I want to do a little test here with my AL0 where I'm just going to solo mine with it. And after a certain amount of time, I haven't decided how long yet. I just want to check in on it and see how lucky I've been and how much more or less I've made with it compared to if I were to just pool mine with it. So that is why I want to be solo mining with this because you know, if I'm lucky, I might make a bit more and ROI on this miner a bit faster than if I were to just pool mine. All right. So with that, I do notice that we are up and pool mining with the AL0 to hero miners now because I see that I have uh, sent a bunch of accepted shares here. Uh, and also I can look my wallet address up on hero miners pool by just coming to uh, home here in the top tab and just pasting my address into your stats and payment history here and hitting look up. And if I do that, I can see that my little AL0 is showing up here and, you know, displaying some hash rate. Um, this usually takes uh, sometimes up to an hour before it displays the full uh, hash rate of your device here. Um, but for some reason, the hash rate is just not showing up in the actual miner dashboard for the, you know, the Ice River miner. Um, I don't know why, maybe it just needs more time to kind of realize that it's up and hashing. But as you can see, it is sending accepted shares. It's been up and running for about seven and a half minutes. So it is doing its thing. For some reason, it's just not showing up here in the dashboard. So quick update, it started showing the hash rate in the dashboard here after about 10 minutes or so of mining. So yeah, all good there. For the sake of the, you know, keeping this video short, I'm just going to show you how to solo mine with it uh, instead, because I think that is more interesting and something actually valuable for you guys to see. And it is also extremely easy to do with hero miners. So I just need to come back into my mining settings here. And essentially all I need to do here is in the wallet slash worker field, instead of just my uh, wallet address, I just need to put solo and a colon in front of it. So as you can see here, if we go back to alephium.herominers.com and click on start, we actually have a little section here explaining it. So essentially it says you can solo mine using any port of the pool. So any of these server addresses and any of these ports. And all you have to do is just put solo in front of your wallet address, just like I showed myself doing here. So I'm just going to do this for all of these three and hit save hit OK, and then as per usual, hit restart. And with that, I want to talk a little bit about solo mining, and then we'll see how it's going. So in the last few weeks, I've been trying to learn more about how solo mining actually works kind of behind the scenes. And if there are things that we as miners can do to increase our odds for solving blocks. In very simplified terms, the way solo mining works is that with each new block, the solo pool will send you a job. Your miner will then start generating guesses as to what the solution for that job is. And as many of you probably know, one of these guesses is called a hash, which means that since the AL0 that I've got set up in this video has a hash rate of 400 giga hash per second, it generates 400 billion guesses for the solution for that job per second. So what increases our odds here? Well, of course, just how much hash rate and how lucky you are will be the two main factors. But there is something else outside of that which also can affect our results. And that is how fast our connection to the pool is. And there are two main reasons for this. The first one being that with each new block, 
there is a new job to be solved and the longer it takes you to receive that new job from the pool, the longer you're just hashing away at that old block that has already been solved by someone else and therefore the less time you have at actually trying to solve this new block. But there is also one more disadvantage to having a slow connection to the pool and that is that if you do find the correct solution for a block and submit it, but it takes a long time for that solution to be sent to the pool because of your slow connection, someone else might find and submit a solution during that time, which means they beat you to it and they get the block reward instead of you. This means you produce what is known as a stale block, a block solved by submitting a correct solution to a job that has already been solved by another miner. Usually, those stale blocks are just discarded as not valid. However, this isn't actually always the case, as some coins like Caspa actually accept almost all blocks submitted within a realistic time frame and pay out a block reward even for what would have been considered stale blocks. And for Alephium, it's somewhere in between, where a stale block, which was submitted within a split second of the real block being accepted, will be considered what's called an uncle block and usually still receive a, although reduced, block reward. Now, the easiest way to check your connection to the pool, or more specifically the latency which is what matters in this context, is to just ping the pool server and see how long it takes to receive a response. There is a problem with this however, and very simply explained it's that when you are actually mining to the solo pool, you're not just pinging it, but rather you're actually sending a bunch of work back and forth to it. And because of this, certain tools have been developed to try and more accurately measure the real life latency that you would experience when you are actually mining to the pool. You might even have seen me try one of them, the Stratum ping tool, in a video from a few years ago. The problem here though is that tools like that still don't properly mimic actual mining. And the bigger and more important thing to consider here is what actually happens on the pool side of things. You see, just because the connection between you and the pool might be fast, the time it takes for the pool to actually process, verify and validate the work you send them could still be really slow. And this is something that you wouldn't notice by just using different ping tools. For example, the pool could be using inefficient code or a slow programming language to verify the submitted work. Their server could be really far away from the node that actually validates the potential block after the server verified it. Or the pool could just straight up not have enough computing capacity to handle all the submitted work in a timely manner. So what can you do? Well, if you really care about this stuff, you can do your own research into how the different pools operate. I did talk directly with the developer at Hero Miners, and he told me that they have dedicated nodes validating work in each of their server regions. Their verifier code is written in C++, which seems to be considered the gold standard for this. And finally, he also assured me that they have plenty of compute overhead as to not create bottlenecks. But of course, this is something you can't really verify from the outside, so you'd have to take their word for it. On top of that, it doesn't hurt to just check your regular ping to the pool's server just to make sure there isn't a massive bottleneck in that end of the chain. If you get a large amount of latency there, you know to not use that pool server. If you get a small amount of latency though, you're not quite out of the woods just yet unfortunately, as they might be using what's called a CDN. And a CDN is essentially a way to send signals around the globe super fast. And while that sounds good, it has no upside for solo mining and can heavily skew your ping result. Essentially, if they use a CDN, your ping result could be really low, which is good, you want a fast ping time, but your real latency to the pool could still be really bad. Thankfully, you can check if a pool server uses a CDN by using the tool at tools.keycdn.com slash ping. The way that tool works is that it takes the server address that you enter and ping it from a bunch of different places around the world to check the latency to that server from all those different locations. So for example, if you are testing a German pool server address like this one, you should see the lowest average response time from the German location here, and then longer and longer response times the further away these locations are from Germany. However, if all or most locations in this list have very similar response times, it means they are most likely using a CDN, which in turn means that you can't really know if you have good latency to the pool or not, as the results will be masked by them using a CDN. Your real latency to the pool could still be good, but you can't really know for sure. So if you want to be on the safe side, 
go for a pool server with low latency that doesn't use a CDN. And also, if you are solo mining with the Hero Miners pool, you can even check the latency right on their website here to all of their different servers. Uh, it's just under the start tab on alephium.herominers.com. So that is very handy. And as you can see, they don't use a CDN because all of these are different from my location. So it's just a handy little tool and it's nice of them to put that directly on the website. And finally, I also want to talk about, is this stuff even worth caring about? Absolutely check your regular ping to the pool servers and test to make sure they aren't using a CDN. But other than that, the stuff that actually matters all happen poolside and unfortunately there is no reliable way for us to compare the speed of that between different pools. And that said, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that most of the bigger trustworthy pools are all hopefully about as good as each other in this regard. So go with a pool who isn't shy about openly sharing how they operate and that you also have low latency to and you'll probably be just fine. And just like that we are up and solo mining to the Hero Miner solo pool with this AL0. And if we check the Hero Miner's dashboard here, we can see that our current solo effort is just 0.2%. Anything below 100% means that we are more lucky than if we were to pool mine and we're yielding more coin than if we were to pool mine. And everything above 100% means we are less lucky than, you know, if we were to just pool mine. And obviously I've only been up and mining for a few minutes here, so it's not fully displaying my full hash rate yet, as I already mentioned. Same thing as with pool mining and solo mining there. But what I'll do is I'll just keep an eye on this for the next few weeks and maybe month or two, and we'll see where we end up on this. But please let me know what your opinion on pool versus solo mining is down in the comments. Because I'm actually quite curious where your head is at in terms of just like risking it to get a bit more rewards if you're lucky versus just kind of being safe with pool mining. So leave that down in the comments, please. I look forward to reading your replies there. And also let me know if you think I will actually be luckier than if I were to just pool mine or not. And if you learned something from this video, I'd really appreciate if you could give it one of these. And what I'll do is I'll leave a really cool video over there. I haven't actually decided which video it's going to be yet, but I think you're really going to like it. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.